before I get to um, to give you the message that I have uh, for tonight or the teaching that I have to briefly kind of break it down to you, I just want to let you know that um, GLM ministry is not just uh, a brand as many would say it, but GLM is uh, pretty much a mission or an assignment that God has given me to reach the church beyond the four walls. You see, uh, there are other churches that are here tonight. Can I welcome all those that are here from Bread of Life uh, uh, Ministries? If you're here from Bread of Life, please want to stand on your feet so people can come and acknowledge you. Thank you so much for your support. Bread of Life, Sarah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Come on, give them a round of applause. Thank you so much. You may be seated. So uh, it is not just a Rama event, this is an event that touches the body of Christ. And I believe that God gives us a kingdom message not only for the people that you, you preach and you pastor each and every day, but you have actually a message that goes beyond the four walls of our auditorium. And this is a reason why through different mediums we have different events. If you look into your registration pack, you have many details about what we do and, uh, and how we do things and, and uh, different things that you have uh, as to the vision and the mission that we have as GLM. So it is not just another, another, um, another, another event whereby we gather just to show off who we are, but it's an assignment that God gives us to empower young adults and eventually as well those that are single and those that are in relationship. So tonight's event is all about made special for someone special. How many of you believe that are special? Yeah. How many of you consider yourself special? Yeah. If you really consider it special, I'm sure you could have done quite better than that. How many of you really know that you are special? Yeah. So it's, 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 it's a night where I want you to relax. It's nothing formal. Though we dress formal and you know, dress for occasion. Some of you look like James Bond. <laughs> Some of you are, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great time that we're about to spend. So I want you to be relaxed. It's going to be a great time. We're going to talk about style. We're going to talk about makeup. You know, some, some people still struggle with that. Uh, we're going to kind of help you out tonight. Amen. It, it's it's going to be a great time we're going to have. Are you ready for me tonight? Yeah. I said, are you ready for me tonight? Yeah. I really don't feel, feel like you're ready for me. I said, are you ready for me tonight? Yeah. So uh, on the registration pack, you have all the information. You have my thank you letter, thanking you for coming and attending this meeting. And you also have uh, you, you also have uh, uh, the vision assignment or vision mission that you have. And way back, we talk a lot about what GLM is all about, what our missions. We have four key events that happens throughout the year, and this is one of it. So we have different events that happen throughout the year, and each event has its own audience, and it's just amazing. And uh, in, in the form as well, you also have a partnership form if you'd like to partner with this ministry. Help us reach nations, help us reach the people that you cannot reach on our daily Sunday services. Please, as well, uh, you can fill in that form and leave it behind on the table, and one of, the, of, of, my, of my team will be able to, um, to get to it. And I won't start this message without thanking my beautiful wife, who's here tonight. Um, she, she, she's really a blessing to my life. And uh, thank God for that. Very good night, Sandy. I'm going to see how it goes for you. These people are underground people. You know, sometimes they forget to sleep and work after hours, make sure that you know whatever pastor wants, pastor gets. So I thank God for all of you. May you stand on your feet so people can acknowledge you as well. Uh, you have Mr. Treasure and his wife. You have uh, Sister Lily. You have Pastor Pastor. special for someone special though it's kind of a 
relaxed meeting, but I want you to give me my, your attention because what I'm about to say is quite important and I believe it will help you out. Getting into a relationship and succeeding into the relationship can prove to be a very difficult task and almost impossible to achieve. No one can succeed in a position they've never been prepared for. You cannot be a CEO and succeed in a CEO position if you have never been prepared for it. Opportunities might open before you. Opportunities might be given to you. But it is your preparation that determines your success to it. So we see that a lot of people get into relationship casually, you know, they just flow with the mood. Uh, this fine lady which happened to walk by the restaurant or happened to walk by the shop or happened to walk by the church and you're like, oh my goodness, is this lady alone? And you know, you find out that the lady is single and you kind of ask them out. It is not just about you getting a person or getting a companion, but it's more to that than just having a person to date. So relationship has to be prepared. Success for most part is never accidental, but always intentional. So meaning that you have to intend to succeed in order for you to succeed. A relationship cannot work if you don't intend for it to succeed. So there are certain people that are going into a relationship just because they want to try luck. Oh, maybe if I'm lucky enough, I will be able to get this girl. If I'm lucky enough, maybe I will get married to them. If you want to your relationship to work, you need to allow yourself to intend for success to come out of that relationship. So many people get into a relationship just because they have to get into a relationship. Many people get into a relationship for many other reasons. But it is your intention, it is what you prepare from the inside that determines how good the relationship or how successful the relationship will be. So it has to be intentional and not accidental. Don't, don't just fall in love. Prepare yourself. You know, you don't have to fall like it was an accident. Oh, my goodness, I am in love. Oh, my goodness, you know, this guy just happened to be, oh, Lord, help me. And it, it doesn't have to be that way. You have to be in, in, in intentional. It has to be thought through. If you don't know how you got there, you won't know how to keep and maintain yourself in success. The right foundation must be laid for you to survive anything that you are building. And it might present itself some challenge in some particular time, but it is quite important that you understand that success in relationship, it is not just success because it's an accident. It is, it is success because somebody actually intends for it to be a success and works for it to be a success. How many of you would like your relationship to be a success? If you are single, you're trusting God that when you get into a relationship, your relationship will be a success. So it's quite important that you have to have that desire. You need to have that drive in the inside of you so that whatever you are believing or whatever you're trusting God for will eventually become the reality that you see on the outside. Making a relationship work is not about you understanding the other person in your relationship, but it starts with you understanding yourself. Many people struggle to understand themselves. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You struggle to understand yourself. And if you struggle to understand yourself, how can you understand the other partner? The first thing you must understand about yourself is that you are special. Somebody say, I'm special. Say it one more time. If there's anything you need to know about yourself, you need to know that you are special. There are no two like you. There are no three like you. You are one of a kind. You are one special one in this world. God made you special. You need to know it about yourself. And there is only one you and you are an original. You are not a copy. You are a masterpiece. You are unique. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You cannot attempt to understand others when you have struggles to understand yourself. Most people who are unhappy is because they don't have something to make them happy rather they don't know themselves enough to know what makes them happy so somebody gives you a jewelry thinking that they will be happy or they will make you happy and all of a sudden you begin to complain that he came late while he brought you a jewelry that cost him 10,000 rand and all of a sudden he thought that because this jewelry cost him some little bit of money will make you so much happy but all of a sudden you're complaining about something else why because you have not understood yourself what makes you happy what makes me happy what makes me who I am so you need to understand that my happiness is not dependent upon the other person, but dependent upon my understanding of who I am and what I want from life. 
You try your best to be the best partner you can be in this relationship, but it feels like it's mission impossible to ever get him happy or ever get her happy. If they have not figured out who they are, it's always going to be a struggle for you to ever, ever make it to happiness. Your happiness or your effort will always be wasted and non-appreciated. So the first part of this teaching tonight, I would like to talk about successfully single. Successfully single. Successfully single. Successfully. If, if, if there is... Being successfully single, then there must be some failing single. And that's what I would like to unwrap to you tonight. And we go further to talk about different kind of things that I believe are quite important. A successful single, if I may define, is somebody that is happy with themselves. Have a great sense of self-esteem. In brief, it's somebody who's aware of who they are. If you are not aware of who you are and what is your ability, you are not successfully single yet. You need to know who you are. You need to know what you stand for. You need to know your value. Somebody else should not be defining value for you. You don't expect some boyfriend to begin to tell you how valuable you are. You need to tell yourself, I know what my mama gave me and I know how worth I have. You're not just standing there and waiting for some people to give you a compliment that never comes. And all of a sudden you feel like you are cheap. Not because you are cheap, but it's simply because you, don't, you are not aware of yourself. And this is the reason why unsuccessful singles always depend on others for them to know how much or how worth they are. Become aware of who you are. When Adam was created in the book of Genesis chapter 6, or chapter 1 verse 26, I believe going through 29. The Bible says that as he was created, God took him around the garden to tell him the things that were under his authority. So that he would become aware of the things that was happening. He would become aware of his authority. He would become aware that he was created in God's image. And the animal fears him, not because he's a man, because he has the image of God in him. If you don't know who you are, it's always going to be difficult for you to find somebody on the outside to define who they are for you. Jesus asked his disciple, who do people say that I am? Well, some say you are a prophet. Some say you are this. Some say you are that. Some say you are the son of this. Some say you are a prophet. Some say you are Moses. And he asked them, who do you say that I am? People that live with him all his life. But only one knew how to define him. And he defines him not because it was what he saw on Jesus, because it was revelation. There are certain people who will never know who you are until God reveals them to you. There are certain people, even you're sitting next to them, you've been dating them 10 years, they never understood who you are. And some of, some, some of them only knows the value of who you are until, you know, it's too late and you've moved on with your life. And all of a sudden, they're the kind after you and, you know, trying to text you, trying to stalk you, go to your shop, go to your uh, office work, go to every places where you are. Please, I made them. I was stupid when I let you go. Uh, oh, Lord, please forgive me because I should have never let you go. It's not because you are stupid. It's because it's, you just realized who I was too late. So when it's too late, bye-bye. Understanding yourself is all about knowing, number one, what you can and cannot handle. There are certain people who just don't know what they can handle. How much can you be able to handle? In terms of emotionally, in terms of work, in terms of uh, uh, planning, in terms of visions, how much can you be able to handle yourself? Not the other person, not what they put on you, but as a person, how much are you able to handle Secondly, you need to know what you think you deserve. There are certain people who think that they deserve something less than the best. And I wonder, why should I deserve something less than the best when I know that I am special? 
I wonder why should I, why should I settle for less when I know that there is some best happening in the, in the, in the future? Why should I settle for less while I know that God has an amazing plan for my life? What you think you deserve is what will always come your way. If you think that you deserve to be abused or to, to allow anybody to walk on you and, you know, uh, tell you whatever they feel and talk, talk to you like, the, like you're a piece of trash, it is what you're going to get. But if you know that you deserve something best, you know that you deserve something good, you're going to wait until that good comes. Listen, you must love yourself enough to know what you deserve. Don't, I'm not saying love, love your family. I'm not saying love, love your brother. I'm not saying that, you know, love, love your children. Love, love yourself enough to know what you deserve. And when what is coming is not what you're seeking, run away from it. You see, there are people who get in relationship for all kinds of reasons. I'm going to get into that. But you need to know, what do I deserve? In our church, you have ladies that studies a lot. You have ladies that get degrees and stuff like that. And now you are a lady that is very educated. Your parents did their best to get you an education. And all of a sudden, you try and you get yourself a degree. You work, you are independent and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, this good-for-nothing boy comes to you and all he does is waste your money. And you think you deserve that? You, you, you really think you deserve that? I mean, just kind of sum up all that the investment that the parent did on your studies. From grade one to university. For most part of you that came from other countries.